This film contains adult language. There are 17 swear words carefully placed throughout. Kids, can you find them? Hey, this is your friendly neighborhood, Manny Moo Raker, and uh, it's episode 337. <sighs> I got the worst case of the Mondays. This is why this episode is so late today, because I really had to fight myself to put it together and then to not do it and to do it. I literally spent about um, an hour and 20 minutes just looking for music to play. And and uh, and to be honest, the songs that I'm playing, <laughs> none of them are fucking new. That is the world I'm living in today, thanks to it being Monday. But we're here right now, so let's make the best of it. Damn it. The first thing I want to do is I want to thank everyone that has submitted a tinfoil hat contest number two picture of your fanciful creations. Your signal defeating, mind control stomping Alien ass kicking tinfoil weaponry. I gotta say, we got some really creative stuff coming through. But if you're interested in getting in on this action, you, you're running out of time, buddy. You need to pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Get that tinfoil out. You haven't been on the grill since uh, last summer. So you got a shitload of Tim for there. Let's get it together. If you're interested, email a picture of your Tim for hat. It could be on yourself. It could be on your pet. It can be on your grandparents. I don't know. But email it to ufobusterradio at gmail.com. UFO Buster Radio, all one word, confusing as fuck, at gmail.com. And I will gladly accept it as an entry. The next thing is, ah, oh man, SpaceX, God, Starlink. Oh, Elon Musk, what the hell? There continues to be articles talking about how folks are getting together petitions, especially those in the science community, to put a kibosh on Elon's plan to get the 13, well, a little bit over 1,300, close to 1,400 Starlink satellites in orbit by the end of the year. People are pissed. I even saw an article that kind of said the same thing I said about a week ago, and this one was published in Forbes, and it said, uh, basically, your your image, your memory, what you see now in the sky it's 4.2 far fucked. Won't be the same. So you might as well take a picture of it, record it. It'll last longer. Because it's going to change dramatically. And you, you know, the thing is that uh, SpaceX is not the only organization out there. It uh, has those, uh, you know, super villain plans to destroy our view of the cosmos. There are other companies that are planning the same thing. The only difference is that uh, only one company has the gonads to get it done and get it done quickly. And there is no doubt in my mind, and I've said this before, that Elon smells what The Rock is cooking. And that is that uh, there will be some legal issues coming up here shortly for them. I mean, they fucked up. They did. The planning was not so hot. But by the time, by the time anybody actually uh, picks himself up by the big girl panties and, and gets it into a courtroom to file something, I I predict Elon's going to be like halfway through putting these satellites up. That's my prediction, pretty much. Um, besides that, there was a uh, another little tidbit. And I said, you know, let's knock this out real quick before we get to our first track for today. 
little tidbit is that uh, our friend in Japan has decided not to um, have a uh, reality show go on. Yusaku, which we talked about here in a few weeks ago, the billionaire that has his uh, paid his ticket to get on the uh, Starship, decided he's not going to continue with his whole matchmaking documentary. The Japanese billionaire who put out this, uh, I don't know, this open ticket into his life, looking for a girlfriend to take, or eventually get married, right? But to take her in uh, to his trip around the moon, he's kind of dropped out of it. He says, listen, uh, due to personal circumstances, uh, he's not going to be able to do it. And uh, there's a quote in here. The article is linked in the description. Despite my genuine and honest determination toward the show, there was a part of me that still had mixed feelings about my participation. <laughs> I guess he didn't read the fine print. One more millionaire who doesn't read the fine prints and uh, decided to back off. So all you ladies who were out there, and some guys too, who were getting yourself ready to be on the show to uh, tie the knot with his building there while you travel around the moon, I guess you're going to have to keep on slumming it at the local bars. What can I say? That's that's just the way it is. I know you guys were popping the lock and doing the robot at your desk. It's okay. You could be a freak like that. 
You won't get fired for it, I'm sure. The first article for tonight actually comes from uh, uh, <laughs> Metro UK. And I, honestly, I first saw this article on uh, UBR Truth Seekers, which was posted by the one and only, the man, the legend, the myth, Ronnie Dawson. Ronnie Dawson, where are you? I really haven't seen Ronnie online at all. Well, not during the live broadcast. I've seen him on Twitter and Facebook quite a bit. Uh, and, as, of course, in the, the Facebook group. But uh, this one was kind of strange for me. This was like, huh, things that make you go, hmm. Leaked NASA footage shows a manned mission to Mars in 1973. Yeah. So when I first looked at the link, this looks like, I don't know. I mean, could it have been doctored up in some way with special effects? Yeah, probably. Uh, apparently, this uh, leaked footage, of course, is from NASA. It's blurry. It uh, it allegedly shows a manned mission to Mars in 1973. And there's a bunch of wobbly footage. You see the planet, uh, basically. And you actually, the film starts from uh, Earth orbit. Then you get a shot of the moon. Then you get the shot of the uh, the spacecraft leaving Earth orbit and seeing the moon and Earth in the distance. A lot of conspiracy theories are saying that they believe that um, this is more evidence of a secret space program. Codename Project Red Sun. And according to uh, our faithful conspiracy theories, uh, they believe that uh, humans landed on Mars in late 60s or early 70s. They go as far as saying that uh, the Curiosity rover is also a hoax pointing to the vehicle's shiny solar panels as evidence that uh, they're... <laughs> They're being polished by humans already on Mars. Yeah. So basically, all the rovers... Actually, you know, Opportunity was the other one. I forgot the name of the, the, the third one there. The first two, actually, that went up there. Uh, Opportunity and the, the other one. Ah, oh, shit, I can't remember now. But, you know, I mean, they lasted way longer than what they should have. So I guess there's a bunch of NASA repair folks up there fixing these things. To make it look real for who? We can't really get any video unless it comes from NASA. So I don't understand how that would work. Uh, Nigel Watson, apparently, uh, who was the uh, the author of Haynes' UFO Investigations Manual. According to him, these accounts of secret space missions seem to be growing in number and remind him of the infamous Project Serpo. In uh, November 2005... A uh, contact called Anonymous, who said they worked on the U.S. Defense Agency's intelligence agency, started sending information about an extraordinary alien exchange program called Project Serpo. The anonymous person basing his claims on a 3,000-page document written in the late 70s boldly claimed that six aliens were recovered from Roswell in that infamous crash. And uh, Anonymous claims that um, that the aliens living and or dead were recovered from Roswell, uh, from the crash. And it's basically not new. It's not new information. But in the case relating to uh, the Serpo situation, uh, the alien survivor from the crash, which was known as EBE-1, helped to organize 12 specially trained people to visit his home, planet Serpo, in the uh, Zeta Reticuli solar system. The mission occurred in 1965. These individuals remained there until 1978, 13 years. Uh, during the stay, two of them died. Two remained on the planet, and the rest, after returning to Earth, uh, basically died due to high levels of radiation that uh, they were exposed to on Serpo. Which I guess that would mean they're all fucking dead, even the ones that stayed behind. This is like freaking bananas. So, uh, basically, this footage 
kind of brings to question a lot of things. You know, we have people who have conspiracy theories saying the moon landings never happened. But now here's the other side of it. What if they did and this uh, this weird void of activity in space travel, you know, between the moon landings, the space shuttle missions, and then all of a sudden the end of the space shuttle missions, those voids, what happened? Did we all of a sudden just lose our appetite for going to space? And there's more theories behind that, right? There was the uh, conspiracy that when uh, we landed on the moon, we were told not to go back. It's none ya, none ya business. Get the hell off. Go back to your little shitty ass planet and forget about it. Uh, Zechariah's on, yeah, that's right. Spirit is opportunity and spirit were the two that I was talking about. Yeah, those guys. I mean, something kept them alive. And apparently, it was Corey Good and the gang. They were up there servicing, <laughs> servicing these uh, particular situations up there. But the question to, to really think about this, and I know it's full, it's full of conspiracies, I get it. But is it very possible that in that span of time, you know, in between the uh, the moon missions and then the space shuttle, could it be that there was secret space missions to other planets and bodies in the solar system they were not publicly known. You know, I hate to say it, but you can see where the conspiracy comes in. You can really, as a member of this, as a citizen of this country, um, you know, secrets are const- are a constant thing, kind of like change. They're constants. So I can see. Part of me does see it as very possible that there were secret missions uh, secret experiments, you know, things like that to try to get mankind a little farther, but it stayed a secret, right? Because uh, we don't want everyone else in the world to know. So when it comes to the secret space program, I don't know. I, I can almost see that there is uh, some truth in some of this. Now, did they make it all the way to Mars? I don't know. I have no clue. There is no other evidence other than this uh, shaky, ugly-looking video that's linked in the description. You guys got to check it out and uh, see what you decide. What do you decide? And even if this video is not true for you, even if it rings like a hoax in CGI, get special effects, do you believe that it is possible that in that break that I'm talking about in between space shuttles and moon landings, is it possible that uh, there was a secret space program that was still seeking the stars, trying to reach other situations, other places within our solar system? I think it's something to really think about. And if and listen, if you want to be entertained, you want to look at this video, go ahead and click on it. It's actually kind of making its way around different publications. I found out about eight different publications in addition to the one that Rodney posted on uh, UBR2 Seekers. So, yeah, check it out. It's a short video, but while I don't believe this one's the real deal, I do believe that uh, there may be, there may be some truth to this whole secret space program situation. And honestly, (laughs) because of this article, I decided, you know, we really haven't heard from Corey Good. At least I haven't. haven't seen anything. So why not revisit Corey and, and see what he's up to? So get ready for that.
Yeah, there are some people like this next person we're going to talk about that uh, I honestly do not understand how it is that uh, people continue to follow him. Yeah, it it was a it's just it's a shock to me. It, like when I think about this guy, the F word just it repeats and echoes constantly in my mind to the point where I just uh, I just give up. I just throw my hands up, and I even wonder why I even podcast anymore. Why I even talk about this subject? I can go hunt ghosts, I guess. But I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure in ghost hunting and um, the spiritual uh, side of things or the paranormal. I'm sure there there are Corey Goods there as well. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, of course, I had this story, which uh, was brought to us by the one and only Ronnie Dawson. And so that particular story uh, kind of rang to uh, ran, ran these thoughts in my mind of Corey Good being the person there on Mars trying to fix the damn Opportunity and Spirit Rovers. And um, and that's what that's what came to my mind. I said, let me check on Corey, see what Corey's up to. Now, many of you are are new to this whole Corey Good situation, and, and let me tell you, I was so I don't know disappointed in Dallas, Texas, because that's apparently where he lives, or he did at the time where I when I first found out of Corey Good and his uh, his madness. I mean his uh, his history, you know, because that's just all true. Let's be honest. Uh, and listen, there's a link in the description which was written by Corey Good himself. So what I'm reading to you, what I'm relaying, should I say, um, is pretty much something that the man himself contributed to his uh, his uh, website. So the link is in there. Check it out so you can uh, see what, what I'm talking about. And then we're going to go to what his latest activities are because I thought that he kind of disappeared after that uh, MUFON symposium which was almost like two years ago a year and a half ago where Corey Good was the star you know he wanted to talk about secret space programs and I'm not really sure that that did very much for MUFON's credibility but <laughs> I'm sure it helped out Corey quite a bit uh, now Corey as he speaks about himself on his website he identifies himself as uh, himself as an intuitive empath okay if you ever see images of Corey, there's nothing intuitive about what the fuck he's uh, presenting. I'm, I'll just be honest with you. And, and many of the um, videos that I've seen of Corey on, on YouTube, he barely presents anything. The truth is that Corey really kind of shy, introverted, and um, just really didn't want to speak about things. Now, hey, listen, once you get a gig with MUFON, I'm sure that shit's fucking changed, right? Because uh, the dollar bills, they start uh, rolling in. Now, according to this, uh, Corey Good, at the age of six, was caught up in what um, uh, many people identify as My Labs programs. My Labs being uh, military abduction programs, where uh, they take one of these little snot nosed kids and indoctrinate them and train them for a number of different military black op programs. <sighs> Not really sure that visiting Mars is a, a black ops. Up, I don't know. Um, according to Gory, uh, Gory, <laughs> this shit is Gory. According to a good story, he was trained and served in my lab from seventy six to about eighty six, eighty seven. So he spent about ten years hanging out, being trained to uh, be all he can be as an uh, intuitive empath, I guess. Not really sure. Uh, toward the end of his time with the My Lab, he was assigned to fill in an uh, intuitive empath support role for the uh, rotating Earth delicate seat. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, he shared, uh, I guess the seat itself was shared by secretive government groups in an I, a human type ET super federation council. God, there is such a thing. I thought this only existed in movies. There's got to be a, a reason why sci-fi movies are so good because they they kind of mimic reality, right? Yeah. Uh, his IE abilities, and that's, of course, the intuitive empath situation that he has, uh, played an important role in communicating with interfacing with non-terrestrial beings as part of one of the space program, secret space programs that we're the cast not out of the bag yet, even though 
he <laughs> he's putting it all over the internet and he's been on different conventions telling people, but it's still secret. Uh, during his 20-year service, he had a variety of experiences and assignments, including intruder intercept interrogation programs, assignment to the ASSR, which is the Auxiliary Specialized Space Search Research, the SRV, who knows what the fuck that means, and the Interstellar Class Vessel, and much, much more. He's a busy guy in 20 years. This guy's got a bang-up career, but he looks like he's strung out on drugs. Uh, this all occurred in a 20 and back in 20 and back agreement from, I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about, 20 and back agreement from 87 to 2007. Uh, basically, about 20 years after he left my labs, quote-unquote, he spent that time with the uh, secret space program. Um, according to this also, Corey Good is still very heavily involved with the secret space program as they uh, continue to give him work to facilitate certain activities between Earth humanoids and uh, ETs. All very fascinating. I know you guys on the inside, you are, you're feeling like you've got to yell. You feel like you, you should be just like yelling at the, yeah, one of those, just like Corey fucking good. Sue, Lord have mercy. He's just, he's something else. But, you know, thanks to the secret Mars films, let's go through this. Basically, uh, he also decided that uh, he wanted to join the Texas Army State Guard from 07 to 2012 and uh, C-41 Command and Control Communications, Computations and Intelligence. Ooh, yeah, actually that's C-4I is what it is. Uh, the time in Texas military forces was unrelated to the Secret Space Force. I hope so. Shit, because I'd be happy guys. Secret Space Force is here in Texas. Why not? Uh, Good continues to use his intuitive empath work uh, today and uh, remains in direct physical contact with the Blue Avians. Now, this is the very first time, besides going to the pet shop and seeing uh, parrots, the first time that I've ever heard of Blue Avians, aliens, which are uh, blue birds. (laughs) So uh, if you want to check out the blue birds, please... uh, Visit the link in the description and check out who Corey Good gets all his information from. Um, So he was uh, chosen as a delegate to interface with multiple ET federations and councils on their behalf. So he is a liaison with the uh, Secret Space Program, Alliance Council, the Blue Avians, and he delivers important messages to humanity. What an awesome job. I mean, such a great career, and now he is our emissary <laughs> to the Blue Avians and every other E.T. that uh, he apparently likes to contact. I, I just, some of this stuff is just unbelievable. But the the problem here is that a lot of people, they believe it. They believe every single bit of this whole thing. All of it. All about Corey Goods, the Corey Goods in the world run things. The Stephen Greers, all these guys, completely bananas. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Green Man's on. He says uh, uh, Corey Good knows blue chicken. <laughs> he probably does. They might be related. They might be cousins. I don't know. Uh, you really can't. Uh, I don't know. You can't write this stuff. I haven't said that in a long time, but you can. It just fucking happens to you. So I said, listen, what is Corey Good up to? I mean, he is our emissary to the uh, Blue Avians, right? He is in contact with the secret space program. He should be aware of everything that's going on on Mars. What used to go on on Mars? SpaceX, what they're doing and all this kind of stuff. I said, let me go visit his website. It took me to his Facebook. And if you... If you feel like you want to accelerate your ascension, Corey has a course for you. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you can get the course in many different languages. Spanish, Japanese, French, Portuguese, Mandarin, Hindi, Russian, etc. 
If you want to ascend yourself, like really quick, you don't need drugs for it. You need Corey Good. Save your money. Don't get that uh, marijuana's. Don't get any of the uh, the the rest of the things that go along with it, like cocaine. You don't need that. Crystal meth, forget about it. You save you a little bit of cash, because for the mere price of three hundred and thirty-three dollars, or three payments of one eleven, you too can accelerate your ascension. Yeah. And if you don't speak English or Spanish, it's okay. Corey will bring in a translator to help you get fully ascended with or without the grease. This is what we have to deal with. This is why a lot of times it really isn't worth even dealing with ufology. These guys are just freaking nuts. Nuts. And people love it. People buy these things. I was on his Facebook and I, there were people thanking him for offering him, uh, offering them the opportunity to ascend. <laughs> it sounds like a fucking cult. That's what it sounds like. But is that any better than Stephen Greer bringing people out to the beach to try to communicate with aliens? Hell, Stephen Greer's stuff is a whole lot more expensive from what I've seen. Over a thousand bucks a pop to sit there and try to telepathically communicate with them. The sad part is, there's a market for all this stuff. So I'm thinking, I'm going to start my own church. Church of Moonraker. Where we contact blue chickens. And you know what? You can't. They can't even say I didn't do that. Because I do have a blue chicken. He's on the podcast. He chats with me live. Basically. So that's going to be Church of Moonraker Blue Chicken Ascension. If you want to join that... Let me know, send me an email, a tweet, or hit me up on Instagram. And you will be, through me, in contact with the blue chicken. And we will take you to a higher path of knowledge and rubber dickery. Probings are free and available every Wednesday at 11 p.m. And by the way, the blue chicken wants me to have a brand new vet. So please, send your donations immediately. Yeah, I don't know. It's absolutely crazy. Agreement says, where do I sign? (laughs) The blue chicken told me you would say that. I just want to let you know that. Uh, I thank you guys for listening. Listen, uh, it's it's a Monday. Manic Monday, the blues, I don't know what it is. It was really tough to get this together today. I hope you guys actually stop by the Dark Horde episode number three on Saturday. There is some really weird stuff going on in the world. And it doesn't even matter what part of the world you're in or what country you're in. That's some weird fucking stuff. Some crazy ass people too. But um, we're here to talk about, talk about UFOs and aliens and the crazies that deal with that, to be honest. Uh, Guter says, yeah, it's a quick one. Eh, come on, 36 minutes. That's not quick. Well, you know, like I said, um, it, it it's a... Uh, it is that situation where there really isn't too much of, as far as UFO news. That's why we had to go check in on Corey Good and his Facebook <laughs> activities. Um, and everything else is it's a repeat. People are still trying to take on uh, the Starlink satellites. There's a bunch of other stuff that are just going down. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens this week. There's bound to be some madness for sure. And we'll be here to cover it. And don't forget, make your donations to the moon, the Church of Moonraker Blue Chicken Ascension. I'm here for you. Because the Blue Chicken said so. Ciao.